Hey, welcome back! For those new to the channel, my name is Chris, I'm a Romanian travel filmmaker and photographer. And in today's video, we're going to talk about curves in Premiere Pro. So I'm going to show you how to edit your footage with curves. Uh, and I'm going to explain you step by step why curves is one of the best tool for every filmmaker and for every photographer when it comes to modify the look of your image. Curves is, mm, you know, curves like in nature you can use this and it's very intuitive as long as you understand the basics it's very easy to use it let's jump into premiere pro so this is something i uh, filmed a few weeks ago actually i think two months ago <laughs> still a few weeks ago uh, and there's a footage from my a7s 3 camera now to open curves you go to window and lumetri color and immediately you can see the curves yours might look like this so you have more tabs here press on curves and there is another tool that i suggest you to use go to window and lumetri scopes and make sure right click and select the waveform RGB. First of all, with Lumetri scopes, you can see exactly where your image lays on the specter of brightness and color. I don't suggest you to add it based on what you see on your display, because your display might, be, might not be calibrated. And if it looks good to your eye, it might not look good on other people's displays. But if you add it according to this scope here, then your chances are much bigger to nail that color on every single display. And this is quite easy to understand. Let's make it bigger. It looks very frightening at the very beginning, but it's not. What's zero, it's the ground. What's a hundred, it's the sky. You don't usually want to stay on the ground or in the sky. So what's above a hundred means that it doesn't have any details. You don't want to hit that, usually. There are some situations when you want but most of the times you don't on the other side if you hit below zero then you hit a perfect black color and again you're you're losing detail when you open scopes you are already able to tell many things about your image for example in this scopes i can tell that my image is very flat i'm not hitting zero nor a hundred so most of my information stays in the middle of the image. And this is the beauty of S-Log3 that I told you earlier. I have all the information in the middle and then I can stretch it according to my needs. I can make it darker, brighter and so on. I can see, because this is an RGB scope, I can see that my highlights lay towards red and that my shadows lay towards blue, which I don't necessarily mind. Okay, let's jump into the right side, to the curves. How curves work. So you have this diagonal line, splitted by some other lines. This is exactly the same principle as the Lumetri scopes. What's here, what's down, is the ground. And what's here, it's the sky. And you can make points across this line. You can make as many points as you want. If you're not happy with your points, you can double click and reset the whole curve structure. But let's say I want to put a little bit more contrast in the shadows. So I know that shadows are from this middle point down. So this is midtones and this is shadows. So I can take a point here and I can drag it down to add a little bit more contrast. And then I can take this and add a little bit more contrast in here. And my eyes are here in the in the Lumetri scopes. Sometimes here, but most of the times here. So before and after, before, after. It already looks quite good. So now we modified the contrast of the image, and you can see it's a it's it's a it's an S shape. Usually, to add contrast, you make an S shape like this one. If you want to extract contrast, you make the um, the opposite of an S shape. You take this here and then take this down. And you can just flatten out the whole image. But we don't want this for now. 
All right, the other three dots are used to edit the colors individually. So you can see here red, green, and blue on our scopes in the left side. We have the same dots here, red, green, and blue. The nice part is that you can add red, for example, with these curves, but you can also extract red and get cyan. So there are two colors in one, red, and then by extracting red, you get cyan. The same thing here, you can add green, you can subtract green and you, you get magenta. The same thing here. You can add blue, you can subtract blue and get yellow. I want to subtract a little bit of red from my highlights. I'm going to my highlights and subtract a little bit of red. Just a tiny bit. But we have five more curves sections in here. Usually the other ones, so you, you will find this one. The first one you will find in most applications. Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, on phones, tablets, desktops, laptops, anywhere. The other three, the other five, <laughs> the other five you will find on professional grading systems like DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro uh, and other software like Final Cut. And those are used to tweak and to get really in depth with your colors. And I'm going to show you how it works. So first one is hue versus saturation. Hue means the tint of the color. So you can take a certain color, hue, and we can use the color picker here to pick a color. Let's pick our pink here. And the software already selected the color for us. Versus saturation. That means that I can add or subtract saturation. So I can add, I can make the color more vivid or more towards black and white. I know that I want it to be a little bit more saturated. All right, I want to do the same with this pink. So I, I will probably extend this. So you can extend with, uh, with your anchors the points. Now let's get to the second one. This says hue versus hue, which means that I can pick a color and change the color so I can pick the uh, let's say the yellows here and I can make them a little bit more red or green so I can tweak the colors let's make it a little bit towards um, towards pink okay, so this is pink but not too much just a tiny bit hue versus luma so hue means color versus luma means luminosity so I can take the color and make it brighter or darker. Pay attention to this one because you get a lot of artifacts if you go really to the extremes. So if I go like this, you can see that the image just... it just crushes. I mean, look in the details of the skin. It's, it's very pixelated. So what I suggest you to do, you either leave it like this, or if you want to take a color, let's say this one is very light in here, you just pull it down just a little bit, not much. The fourth curve, luma versus saturation, means that we take luminosity and we add saturation or we extract saturation. And this works exactly like our scopes. The left side are the shadows and the right side are the bright parts of our image. So if we want to, we can make points and we can, for example, add some saturations in our shadows or subtract saturation from our shadows. You can pay attention to this plant over here. It's washed out, it's very saturated, washed out, saturated. And I want it to be a little bit more saturated. I want to create a very vivid look but not in the mid-tones. I don't want to push these colors, those colors. So the skin tones, I want them to be in the middle. I want the shadows to be saturated. The same with our highlights. I can either saturate them or desaturate them. I want them a little bit saturated, a little bit more saturated. So now the image is a little bit more balanced, but this is balanced based on luminosity. The last curves, saturation versus saturation, balances the image based on how saturated some colors are compared to other colors. So it's not based on luminosity, but it's based on the saturation of other colors. I hope this makes sense. 
So we can just, for example, if we take it down here, you don't see any difference. But if we move towards left, the image starts to become black and white. Okay? And you can just equalize the whole saturation of the image. Just want to want to pull it down just a tiny bit. All right, and let's go back to our curves and see before and after, before and after. And in my opinion, this looks fantastic. As long as you get the basics of curves, it's very easy to create the look that you want. Pay attention on how far you get with your adjustments. If you want to create a cartoonish look, you can also do that. Just play with the, with the curves. Try to stay subtle. This is the trick here. In color grading, everything is subtle and the whole adjustments just make the, the image looks good and some people might not know why, but you will know why. This was my tutorial about curves, how to use curves in Premiere Pro. I hope you like it. If you enjoyed it, please like, share and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.